Kevin Inouye here from Fight Designer LLC and the uh, PewTube and Fight Designer Fight uh, Designer YouTube channels. Um, one more quick review here, probably last for a while, of one of these, uh, what I've been calling the spring blowback shell ejecting toy gun props. And uh, I've been excited about this because this is actually a, a fairly common model, which means that I can get it in different versions. And this is the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P. Can't you tell? So one of the nice things about this is it's a really, really popular common type of firearm. Um, you know, there's different versions out there. There's an M&P 9, there's a 2.0. They just came out with a, a metal frame version instead of the polymer frame version. There's the performance center versions of the cutouts. There's the 9C, which I, I did a PewTube thing on ages ago about the, uh, the blank firing Umarex version. I have a gas blowback of those as well. But this one is the M&P 40. Now, the, one of the nice things is that you really can't tell the difference between the M&P 40 and the M&P 9 uh, until you read the markings. So I don't know why they chose to call this one the M&P 40 when they could have just as well called it a 9. Um, you know, for example, here's an Airsoft, again, a 40, but it doesn't really matter with Airsoft because they're all 6 millimeter, which is basically 22. <laughs> uh, here's a solid rubber dummy. Um, and it's really nice when you have uh, a high performance prop that actually does different things um, that you can get a stunt double for. And so I love that I can get nice soft rubber <laughs> stunt doubles, as it were, for something like this. And now that I've got one, uh, I might go ahead and, and do a, a little graphite rub or something on the slide of this one to get it uh, to a similar finish as this, this new one here. Um, so as with some of the other models I've looked at, the uh, uh, um, I've got a, a Kimber 1911 and the, the Hellcat, uh, which I reviewed last time. Um, this is a, a spring blowback shell ejecting prop. Um, but I've discovered a lot of these have different mechanisms, right? So this one, uh, the, the basic function is the same, right? As you first start to pull the trigger, it compresses a little spring, and then when that releases, that's enough to, to send the slide back, and then the, the uh, return spring pushes it back forward. I've actually got some of the uh, strange green glow-in-the-dark shells in here from the, the came with the Hellcat because the shell ejection uh, function is a little bit different on this one. So let me, let me show you by locking the slide back. So this particular one, instead of actually having a functional extractor like the Hellcat has, where it has to grab the, the lip of the nine millimeter round, well, supposedly 40 round in this case, right, where it's gotta grab the little lip there, hook it and yank it out. And this one, there's a thing built into the slide that's like a, a a wedge, right? You can kind of see like a little chisel in there. And so what it does is just as this round goes behind that and then forward, uh, it, it just kind of pushes it, pushes at the front of the rim of the, yep, there we go. Yep. <laughs> pushes it forward until it pops out thanks to uh, the, the magazine. So it does, doesn't really chamber it. It does push it forward of the magazine lip so that the magazine isn't holding it in anymore. The top of the slide is all that's holding it in now, but then once it clears the, um, the slide, that wedge, that little chisel tip there is starting to push it up and up and up and up and up. And then as soon as it gets far enough back that the, the top of the slide here isn't holding it, it'll pop boop, right out. So, um, you know, I don't really care too much what the, the function is. Like this is a little less realistic of a, a function, um, but unless you happen to see the uh, the slide lock open, you're not really going to notice. Now with slide lock open, yeah, you might see that, and it might look a little bit weird. So I wouldn't I wouldn't do a close up of the open chamber on this one, showing you're out of ammo. Just not something that's good at. Then again, not at the airsoft because then you can see the the gas valve and the little BB feeder and things like that. The nice thing about this is it means that it's much less picky about what kind of rounds you use um, because it doesn't actually have to catch on the lip. So I'm going to go ahead and put in. One of my, a couple of my 3D printed ones that I did when I was experimenting with rounds for the Hellcat. One of these shiny ones, and actually it's a nice thing is it came with some of these shiny ones. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe one of the glow in the dark ones from the Hellcat too, why not? Now it does have to have some kind of a, a rounded tip for that chisel to pick up on it. So it can't just be an empty actual shell casing, for example. Um, and real dummy rounds, probably not the best either because it'd be a little too heavy. The springs and all in these things are pretty darn light. So it does need to be relatively 
lightweight, but there we go. It's just chewing it all out and spitting it out like it should, right? So that's one thing that I like about this model over the Hellcat uh, is that it, it, uh, it'll it feed just about anything. It's much less picky about ammunition and less likely to jam, so that's pretty cool. So here we see a bit of the lineup. Uh, this is the uh, smaller rounds that the GX4 uses. These are the standard rounds that uh, most of these shell injecting ones that use the projectile use. Uh, these are what all of the laser type ones so far have used. This is the, the weird glow-in-the-dark ones came with the Hellcat. Um, this, uh, this is standard with the uh, uh, M&P. Uh, these came with actually a, a non-laser version Glock, but uh, yeah, these are all, you know, hollow in the back. Um, but just for size comparison, this is actually bigger. So here are some actual nine millimeters. And you can see they're, they're not too far off, um, but uh, not exactly the same. Right, obviously shorter, so they're, they're kind of splitting the difference between a full round and a shell casing, which is not a bad compromise to make since it's gonna look the same going in and coming out with these since there's no actual projectile. So it's not too bad. Now, this one is billing itself as a, a 40 Smith & Wesson. This would be a 40 cal. And uh, it's a little, little bigger, but you know, the, the difference is, not that much, honestly. So if you compare nine millimeter to one of those, about the same. Compare a 40 to one of those. Yeah, you can see it's it's a little bigger. You can see on the rims there. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, not not exactly a 40 cal, but you know, often these things aren't right. I mean, I've got a, a blank firing Desert Eagle that says it's. Yeah, you know, it should be like 0.50 or, or 44, and it's uh, it fires eight millimeter. So, you know, this isn't too bad. I'll take it. Uh, like the Hellcat, uh, this was originally a, uh, what they call the, the sort of laser, uh, what is it, like laser blaster, laser training, laser tag, I don't know, whatever. It was originally meant to, to allow for laser training, so there's no projectile in the way that some of these have the little plastic projectile. Um, these higher end ones tend to not have that, but instead they've got these little laser things. Now, on this one, I went ahead and took it out because I like having what looks like an open muzzle. And you can, if you look in there enough, you can see there's something reflecting light. There's a, a you know, little connector lead in there. So it's, it's not perfect, but uh, just as a com comparison here, if I show you the, uh, the muzzle of the Hellcat, you know, you can see the, the laser right there. Right, so it's, it doesn't look like an actual gun barrel uh, on the, uh, the Hellcat RDP. So with all of these, there's just like a, a flathead screwdriver bit. You screw it, you pull it out, and uh, then you can have no laser and not have to worry about it. Um, does mean there's a threaded inner barrel. I haven't tried it yet, but I bet that means I could probably use some of the same um, airsoft, if I could find which threading it is, it might be a little bigger. Um, but some of the airsoft uh, thread adapters to let it use a, a fake suppressor. I'll have to try that sometime and see if that works. If anybody's tried that, let me know. Um, because when this came, it had the laser basically flush with the muzzle. And so as a prop, that's not really what you want to see when you look at the front of it, right? You don't want to... Eh, let's see if I can focus. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to see that uh, that metal bit there you want to see what looks like a hole. Did I get it hooked up again, right? Yeah, there we go, yep. So, as with the others, as soon as the slide goes back, that powers the uh, uh, the laser. So it's meant to have a brief moment of laser dot appearing um, so that you can use these with, with laser training systems and things. Um, but in general, you know, it's it seems to be pretty close to the right size. Uh, I don't own a, a real Smith & Wesson MMP, so I can't compare exactly, but, you know, holding it up to uh, my spring version and my rubber version. Uh, I have a gas blowback somewhere downstairs, but it's in a box somewhere and I haven't unpacked it yet. This is a tiny bit bigger. It's maybe like two millimeters longer. Um, and maybe, uh, width looks about the same. So I think there's probably a, a decent chance it would work in the same holsters. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I don't have any molded Kydex holsters specifically for the m and I don't think. 
uh, in stock right now. And if I do, I don't know where they are. Let's check if the rail is the right size. Yep, yep, the, uh, the rail's a decent size. Uh, if you want to attach tech lights, lasers, whatever, uh, to the to the underside of this, and it would work just fine. Uh, these reviews get a little shorter as I do more of them, and I, I have a little less to talk about. Uh, and I don't have the side by side with this that I did with the Hellcat of the real one. Um, but I gotta say, I'm kind of fond of it. The finish is kind of nice. Uh, it's actually engraved uh, the the logos and not just painted. Um, yeah, it doesn't have an actual extractor, but at least there's something molded in there. Um, uh, yeah, the the, uh, uh, the functions all work as they should. The, the magazine release, the slide catch. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think these are a great option. I have no idea how sturdy this is. Um, it doesn't seem to have the same exposed spring issue down here that the uh, Hellcat did, but I do see a, a little bit of a metal spring on there uh, in the slide catch. Just bring, oh, it's actually, it is the slide catch, yeah. So that, that looks like a little fragile thing sticking out. That might be one of the first things to break, but that's not the most essential either, honestly. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, if you're looking for a, a prop that you can rent to uh, be sort of your hero prop, um, or maybe like one level down from the hero prop, if you want to do an, an actual like high-end, um, you know, modified, or even just like take a real one, Make sure you've got all the proper protocol in place. Gun Wrangler on set, who that is their sole job to make sure that that is safe and that they can tell everybody on set no if they try and do something stupid. But if you need for your super close up hero shot or the shot of someone field stripping it and cleaning it, if you need that real gun, this could be a great version for when you swap that out. And the beauty of there being zero projectiles, you can do these point blank headshots, things like that, that you, you can't safely do with blanks. Maybe with an airsoft gas blowback, as long as you're being super careful about all the protocol. Um, but then you don't get shell casings. And uh, yeah, this has zero projectiles. So I would feel completely confident on set once all the, the talent on set has been sh shown exactly how it works and they all feel safe about it. I would have no problem with aiming this at an actor and pulling a trigger. Now, I, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't break the four gun rolls. You know, you can't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to destroy something and point it at anything you don't want to put a hole in and always treat it like it's a loaded real firearm. But, but on set, we can't do that. We do have to make exceptions because our characters are doing things in a different reality than our actors are. And so really, we just need to know that if we're going to break those rules, we have other rules to keep us safe. If I know that we're using a solid rubber firearm, I don't care if your finger's on the trigger, for safety, then it becomes a story question, an acting question. If I know that you're using a, a you know, airsoft spring gun uh, and it's been decommissioned so it can't even fire, I'm okay with you pointing at someone. But we need to check every time to make sure that that's the right prop that we've got and we haven't somehow swapped out for something else that someone carried on the set. With these, same idea. If I know that we've got one of these, I feel okay pointing it at someone and breaking some of the rules as long as we've got all the right protocol in place and everybody has checked to know exactly what it is. So that's that's one of the beauties of these. Uh, and you don't have to CG in the shell casings in post. So hey, but you do have to chase them around the floor and figure out, hey, where'd they all go? SAG rules say you should do that even with blank casings though. So even though they're not reusable. So, uh, you know, it's just a good habit to get into anyway. Um, and, you know, when you can 3D print your own and it'll take anything, that makes it all the better. So, uh, until next time, and I'm not sure when that'll be, uh, this is Kevin Inouye, the Fight Designer LLC, just sharing some of the props that we have uh, available for rent and uh, some of the new things that are on the market in case anybody's interested in new developments in our field. Uh, I recently put a video on my Fight Designer channel, which I do, basically anything that isn't prop guns goes there, but I also occasionally want to at least mention prop guns. So I did a, a sort of generalized version over there where I looked at some of the, the prop shotguns and the general types, the, the Nerf, the projectile shooting shell ejecting and these laser shell ejecting and talked about them as sort of general categories and the, the movement of what's going on with those. So if you're interested, pop on over to Fight Designer LLC and check out that video. Um, and uh, you know, as for PewTube, I think we might've done enough of these for a while. I think I might've bought enough of these for a while, especially since nobody pays me to do this. So I think if we do another video anytime soon, it's gonna be something else and probably not a product review. Uh, so until we get all that done and, and you know, this, this is going to be a lot to catch up on. I'm playing with like making 3D doubles now, 3D printed doubles that'll fit some of those, uh, some of these new props. This one I need to play with the scale a little bit. Matches the, uh, the Hellcat, but it wasn't quite perfect scale. So I, I need to, 
I need to tweak this model a little bit, but I'm working on it, right? Being able to have stunt doubles for your props is a great thing. Uh, and they don't make rubber, uh, rubber Hellcat RDP as much. So anyway, until next time, Kevin, you know way. Uh, have fun, play safe, stay sane, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.